Hi guys and welcome to another video lesson. Today we're going to be taking a look at some paradiddle speed drills. So hopefully the title of today's lesson tells you everything you need to know about what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the paradiddle to get faster around the drum set. We're also going to be looking at it to gain more control over what we're doing as well. It's often overlooked that one. We want to get faster, we want to play faster, but with that needs to be the element of control as well. You have to be playing something evenly and be in complete control if you want to play it quickly. So this first exercise I've seen used by countless drummers. It's on uh, Jared Falk's uh, Drumio series. Mike Johnson's 10 Days to Faster Hands, Tommy Igo uses it in his lifetime warm-up, I've seen it in countless drum DVDs, it's on YouTube channels, it's everywhere, it's a really, really popular exercise. So it must be worth knowing if so many different great drummers are still teaching it. My warm-up has changed over the years, it varies depending on how much time I have to warm up before a show, different techniques that I'm working on, different ideas that I've been looking at. There are a few things in my warm-up that have always been there, the mainstays of my warm-up that, that my pre-show warm-up is built around, you could say, and this exercise is definitely one of them. This one is always in my warm-up, no matter what I'm preparing for. Okay, so enough talking, let's get started with the actual exercise. It's based around paradiddle diddles and standard paradiddles. We're gonna play two paradiddle diddles. Now, left is, I've remembered straight away, I'm very pleased with myself for remembering before I even got started today. Left is, turn all of these stickings around. You know the drill by now. So, paradiddle diddle, right, left, right, right, left, left. We're gonna do two of those. And then a standard paradiddle, right, left, right, right. Quick note here before we go any further, I have had some students check with me and ask with me and get a little bit muddled sometimes as to whether the standard paradiddle is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, finished, or if it's just right, left, right, right. The answer is the second one, paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, that is a standard paradiddle. We do normally play paradiddles moving from one hand to the other. That is true, that's correct. But a standard paradiddle is just the two singles and one double. So getting back to our exercise, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. Two paradiddle diddles and one standard paradiddle. We're gonna accent the beginning of each of those paradiddles as well. Right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. Then the pattern switches to our other hand. Left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Now this is where we find out the difference between our lead and weaker hand. Probably, We'll start off a little bit too fast, tear into the paradiddle diddle, standard paradiddle, I got this, I know this. And then when it switches to left hand lead for me, or non-dominant hand lead you could say, suddenly the wheels come off. It's a really good exercise for showing just what the gap is between your stronger and weaker hand. It's also a really good exercise for developing that weaker hand because both hands have to do the same amount of work. It doesn't favor one hand more than the other. So we're gonna be playing each of the exercises from today's lesson at three different tempos, 60, 85 and 100. Now you do not need to start at 60, and you may go way past 100 beats per minute. Great, that's fine. Start at whatever speed you need to and work up from there. I don't expect people to be able to jump from 60 to 85 to 100 either. You'll probably have to work up in increments of two beats per minute or five beats per minute or 10 beats per minute. Whatever you need, that's absolutely fine. The key here is being in complete control of each exercise more than once so regularly being able to repeat it under complete control and then changing the speed. Here we go at the three tempos. We'll start with 60, then 85, then 100.
So next up, we're gonna be looking at single, double, and triple paradiddles. So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left is our single. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left is our double. And right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left is our triple. That's a lot of rights and lefts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna accent each one of those. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left is our standard paradiddle, I should say, sorry. Then right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left for the double paradiddle. So two accents in each one of those. And then right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left for the triple paradiddle. So three accents in that one. Keep the accented notes nice and high and the unaccented notes nice and low. We're also going to move those accents. We're going to orchestrate them. All the right-handed accents are going to go on to tom three and all the left-handed accents are going to go on to tom one. Now it's worth saying before we get started here, the time signature of this exercise is a bit weird. The normal paradiddle, standard paradiddle, we're going to play that round and play it in four. So right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and then again. That gets us to four. Triple paradiddle is naturally in four. You play the right-handed and left-handed version of that and you stay in four. The double paradiddle, if you play the right-handed then left-handed version, you only get 12 notes. So we're actually in three, four. There's no accents on the click track. It's just gonna run all the way through for this exercise. So don't worry about the fact that we're changing time signature. Just run it round and round and round. The pattern will eventually resolve itself. But again, you don't really need to worry about that either. Focus on the sticking and the orchestration and being in control of the exercise. Here we go at our three tempos, 60, 85, and 100. So this third and final exercise has been shamelessly stolen from Jared Falk and his Drumeo series on faster hands. So thank you, Jared Falk, for this one. It's a really, really deceptively tricky exercise, this. We're gonna do it in the other way round to the second exercise. So instead of working up the paradiddle, single, double, triple, we're gonna go the other way round. Triple, double, single. And we're only gonna play two paradiddles at the end, two single paradiddles. So that's actually gonna be in two. We're gonna be in four, four, three, four, and two, four, strictly speaking. But again, the metronome's gonna be unaccented, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just run the pattern round and round and round. So the orchestration for the pattern, triple paradiddle first, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right. So using the snare and all the toms, then back up again. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Double paradiddle next, right, left, right, left, right, right. So you end on tom two, left, right, left, right, left, left finishing back on the snare, and then the standard paradiddle, right, left, right, right, only goes as far as tom one, left, right, left, left, and the pattern completes, and you go round again. Now, it's worth saying here, something I had to really, really work hard on when doing this pattern, try not to look or concentrate or focus on the orchestration. Try and think about the sticking. It's the one thing that stays constant throughout, triple, double, single paradiddle, then it repeats. Particularly when you get to the single paradiddle at the end, it's really deceptive what it looks like and what it sounds like. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. It's a really tricky one, that. Focus on the sticking and count the sticking pattern would be my suggestion here. Here we go, 60, 85, and 100 beats per minute.
So there you go, paradiddle speed drills. Incorporate those into your warm-up. Practice them regularly and see how you develop over time. Do not worry if you're not at 100 today. In fact, I would be really surprised if all of those exercises are ready to go 100 beats per minute plus right now. If you're around that 100 beats per minute mark already, fantastic, well done. How much further can you push it? Where does your control break down? Which tempos do you need to be working at? So for example, if you're losing control around 120, well done by the way, if you're right up there already, then maybe back off to 100, 105, 110 and push forward from there. These are speed related exercises. They're drills, if you like. They're designed to improve your control and speed. But that doesn't mean you can't have some fun trying to be creative with them. How can you orchestrate these patterns? Can you turn them into fills or groove variations? Try and get as much value out of each one of these exercises as you possibly can. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Stay safe, take care, and enjoy your drumming, guys.